What's going on everybody, it's Dilbert and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to continue with the ChatGPT tutorials where I'm going to be showing you how to embed the Rosling compiler. I'm also going to show you how to integrate it into the prototype that we're working on. And I also wanted to invite you to check out my Patreon where I'm basically going to be making this project available. So if you get it as of today, you can become a Patreon with full source code access to all my projects. And that's going to really help me in making more videos like this. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do today is we're gonna open up Visual Studio 2022 and I'm gonna create a new project. So this project is going to be a class library. You can search in here as well for class and you're gonna find that template and then hit next. Once you hit next, we're gonna be naming this project Rustling Compiler and you can just decide where you wanna put it and then hit next. Then you wanna make sure that this is using that net standard 2.1. And if you go to Unity and then File, Build Settings, you're gonna see that in Player Settings, we have it also set to that net standard 2.1. So we can go back into Visual Studio, hit Create. And this project, it's only going to be used for basically generating all the DLs that we're gonna need. And we can just delete the class and then just go into manage new packages. And I used to work at a company and I used to handle a lot of their core packages. So this is, I feel like I'm at home by doing all of this. But anyways, you can search for that, uh, that package, which is Microsoft Code Analysis, C Sharp Scripting. And then I'm gonna use the latest stable version. It's always recommended. Hit install, hit accept on the license. And then once you do that, we're also gonna need another packaging here, which is gonna be the system runtime loader. Otherwise Unity, it's going to complain that it can't load those DLs. And then hit accept. And then I'm also gonna go into the project here, edit project file, and we're gonna add another line that we're gonna need. So I'm just gonna copy here and then paste it into the editor here. And then this is just gonna tell it to basically copy the DLs, the assemblies that we're gonna need in Unity to the bin directory. So we can just close out of that. And then you can just build the solution. Once you build the solution, you're gonna be able to see all the different files in here. If you don't add that setting that I just showed you, it's not gonna copy all these DLs, which we're gonna need. So what we need to do though, is we can go into Unity and we're gonna need to create a new folder in Unity. And this folder is gonna be called resources. That's where we're gonna be putting our DLs. We'll just double click on that to go in it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and select them all, but we don't need the actual project DL. Also the JSON we don't need. And the C Sharp DL we don't need because Unity is going to load its own. Otherwise you'll get an error saying that there's a duplicate DL being added. So once you do that, then we should be okay with Unity so far with the assemblies that we're gonna need. So this is gonna get us basically to be able to compile a code at runtime by just passing a string. So the next thing that I need to do is we're gonna be creating what's called, and I call it the Rustling Code Runner. You can call it anything you like, but I'm gonna go here into scripts and we're gonna be creating a new script. And this one, we just call it Rustling Code Runner. And then just hit enter. And then let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio and start implementing it. All right, guys, we got here the C Sharp script that we're gonna have to implement. It's also going to be a singleton. So we'll just bring in the singleton instance in here. And then we can just get rid of all these because I'm going to be adding some other things. So the first thing that I'm gonna need though is I'm gonna need basically a list of namespaces. So we can just do an array of namespaces. I'm also going to be, I want to basically configure this through the inspector. So that's going to be a serializable field. We're also gonna need another serializable field here, which is gonna be basically our source code. We're also gonna make it a text area. So I think we can do something like five and 12. So minimum of five lines up to 12 lines. It's gonna give us a lot of space to be able to write our code. I also going to be adding another text area. So we can just copy all this just to, accelerate our time here and minimize our time. I think that's better. And then what this is gonna do is it's gonna be the code that we get from ChatGPT. And it's gonna be just additional code that we're gonna be injecting after we get the ChatGPT source code so that we can do other things that are going to allow us to add the scripts that get generated to different game objects in the scene. So I'll show you how that works here as we work on this. I'm also going to need 
another property in here. It's gonna be a Unity event. So let me try Unity event control period to bring it in. And this is gonna be a callback that uh, basically we can wire it up to be able to, to log it or to do anything that we want to do after the code gets generated. So we can just do on wrong code, complete it. And then I'm also gonna do another serializable field here. And this one is going to be an array. And it's not really easy to talk and explain at the same time. So if I make mistakes and you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to always ask me any questions on the comments, which I actually recommend that you do because that just generates more, you know, more ideas. Okay, so this one is going to be a string result info, and we're gonna be printing basically the results of any variables or anything that we are generating through, or we have generated through the scripts that ChatGPT is sending to us. And then now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna have a run code method that we're gonna be able to basically call from anywhere, and this is gonna compile our code. And I'm gonna make it nullable because I don't always want to pass in code. I want to have the code be set at the inspector level, or I can, you know, generate it from ChatGPT and then pass it into this method. So we're gonna have the flexibility in this code. And then I'll just do logger instance. I'll just go ahead and tap there. And then log info. Log info is just gonna say executing wrong code so that we know that this thing is actually is doing something. Then we'll have a try and a catch which is gonna be very important because not all the time ChatGPT might generate what we're expecting. So, we, and also if it doesn't compile, which is what's gonna happen here, then we can see you know, what's happening and we can also log it. So I'm just gonna say log error and then I'll just do just a message. I think it's more than enough. Then we need to specify the code that we're going to be compiling. So I'm gonna be doing here an interpolation and then I'll just do parentheses. I'll show you why. So if this one is null, I'm just gonna do uh, a nullable checking here. And if it's null, I'm just gonna be using the code that is you know, set in the inspector level. And then the other thing that I'll do here is we'll add the additional code at the end. So the way that it's gonna work is we're gonna be able to pass it in from ChatGPT and basically it'll evaluate the left side and then it'll always append the additional code. And if it's null, then there won't be additional code to a pain, so this could be very, you know, it'll be very flexible for that. And then there's gonna be something called a script state. And this is all from the code analysis the scripting that we just embedded. And then we're just gonna do an object, resolve. So there's a lot of magic happening in here and I don't need, you don't need to worry about how this works other than looking at this example and then you can learn about it. But basically this allows you to pass in code and it's going to run through the C Sharp script which is all the Rosalyn c -sharp compiling functionality, and it's going to allow us to compile the code. So it's actually pretty, pretty powerful and pretty easy. So, well, it's, it's, it's easy because they made it easy, but uh, I'm sure there was a lot of difficulties in there. So we need to do another, another method in here that is going to set some scripting uh, script options. So there's also another thing called script options and set default imports. So this is gonna allow us to set some imports that our scripts are gonna be having by default. So you can make this dynamic if you like. In my case, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm gonna do it this way, but this, this is gonna give you a really good example of how this, this is going to work. So this one's gonna be a script options and then default, and then this one's gonna be with imports. And then in here is where we can say, you know what, I want to import the, the namespaces that I have on the top of these script. So if you're looking here, I have a list of namespaces. So if we wanted to specify them, we can. If not, we can use the ones that come from ChatGPT. And then this one, we can just say, you know, Lambda and then N. And the cool thing with this is we can say, you know, we can specify them in here and then, you know, just loop through in here and then import them. But I also need to make sure that we're not including the word, uh, the word using. Uh, because a lot of times, if you have the mistake of saying that, then we can just go ahead and replace it with an empty. So we have, basically we can just do using or not do using, and then this code will work for both scenarios. And then I'm also going to be trimming this just in case you have any spaces in here. So once you have that, we also need to add references so that this, this is gonna work. So 
basically how this works though is if we go in here and it's gonna do tab, we're gonna be doing type of, and then in the type of, this is gonna specify what references we're gonna be importing so that the code can, can basically compile. So we're gonna be importing mono behavior because I know that the that's gonna be one of the assemblies that we're gonna need. And then I'm also going to be importing the debug. So I can also do that assembly. And if you have other assemblies that you're going to be utilizing on your dynamic scripts, you can basically just, you know, add them in here. If you wanna make these more dynamic through reflection, you can also do that. In my case, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to do it this way. I think that's all I need to do on this meta. Now we can just specify it in here. And that way, when this script runs, it's going to get all the imports and the references that it needs. And hopefully, if everything works, which in our case it will, then we should be okay. So once we do that, it's going to get us the result here. So it's going to come, if it compiles, we'll get a successful result. But there's another thing that we can also do, which I thought was pretty cool, is we can also iterate through all the different variables in our script. So I'm just gonna say result. And what I'm gonna do though is in these result bars, which I'm going to, okay, there we go. So the way that this works is I'm gonna say, uh, this is gonna run, right? But what if I wanted to know all the different values of the variables that were declared in the script and in the context that we have access to, right? And this is gonna give us access to everything because we are basically controlling the generation of the script. But basically we're gonna be able to specify which, which vars we want to read information from. So that's what I'm looping through each one of those. And then what we can do here is I'm gonna say result, result info. And then in the result info, I'm just gonna go ahead and you know add the information that we're gonna need, which is gonna be result. And then I'm gonna get the variable that we're trying to read the information from. And we can get the name of the variable, right? We want to know what variable we're reading the value from. And then I can just copy these and then we can just get the value as well. And there's other information that you can get, a lot of, a lot of information that you can get from this. And then what I'll do here at the end is I also want to just start on a new line. And basically it's gonna print one line with the with one variable. If we have multiple, then it'll have multiple lines in the in the serializable field that we can display. And then at the end we can say on run code completed. As long as it's not null, we can invoke it. Just if we wanted to do any extra thing in here. So this is basically how, what's going to compile our code. So we can just go ahead and remove all the different using statements. I think I got everything correct. And if not, we'll figure it out, right? So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And what I'm gonna do though for this one is we can create a new empty script. And this one is gonna call it Ross, well actually Roslyn Co Runner. And then we can just add what we just created. And then we can just zero out everything in here. And normally on the namespace, we can just do system. And we can also do just Unity engine. And there's no code right now or anything in here that we can uh, that we can actually do. But if you wanted to do an example, I'll show you one in just a minute. But we're gonna need to add another, what, what we can do here is let's do this. Let's go into, we have an import button, but what if we wanted to add something else in here? So we can just say compile, just to test this part. We can just say compile button. And then we can just, let's go ahead and, hide all the gizmos. I'm gonna go into 2D so that we can focus on this area. And then this scenario question uh, which I have in here, scenario title, scenario question, is I'm gonna go ahead and move down a little bit so that we don't have it in the way. Okay, so this one is gonna be to compile the code. So I just change this to be compile code. And, and we just, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not. I'll just have it right now to test the Roslyn compiler. And then I'll just add a method, basically a binding to the on click. And then we'll just do this in here and then function, make sure that you go into run code. We don't need to really specify the code in here. We can just go in here, go into our code. Let's say that you want to basically execute something as simple as debug.log. And then we can say, hello world, uh, this works cool or something like that. It doesn't need to be anything special. And then maybe we wanna test the variables just to make sure that this works. We can say math and then pi. And let's make sure that we get the value of pi. 
And if we wanted to add additional code, we can. In this case, we don't really need it. That's just going to be for ChatGPT. And then the results that I want in here is going to be X. So it's going to read the value from X. And then it's going to print this, this code as well. And actually, on, the, on this code, though, we're going to need to execute this. Uh, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and try see what we get. And then we can, we can keep looking at it. So let's hit play. And then what I'm going to do, though, is just to show you how this works is let's go ahead and add a breakpoint in here. And then hit attach. We'll wait for the compiler to attach. And then we can go back into Unity. And then I'm going to click on Compile. And I'm going to do F10 just to show you the code that got, the code that got generated. So we don't have any code. And why is that? Because we did specify code on the, on the very top, right? So let me see. Let me go back in here. And then let's go ahead and hit Play. And make sure that I do have the code specified. So I do have the code specify and let me go into here and this is a singleton so it should be okay and i'm wondering okay so let's try let's go, let's go ahead and try this one more time and you guys are probably looking at it and you're like oh i know what's happening dilmer what's what's wrong with you <laughs> but we'll figure it out here let me go ahead and do compile code i think what's happening is this is empty and it's not null so we can just do we can just change this code just a little bit and then we can just say something like uh, update code. If this is a string is null or empty. And then if this is true, we'll just set it to null. Otherwise, we'll just set it to whatever the whatever the value was. Yeah, otherwise it's just going to always, and we'll need to do updated code. There we go. Otherwise, it's always going to have a value because in the inspector we didn't pass in any value, so it was an empty string. So that's what was happening in there. We can change this code and make it more elegant, but that's basically what's happening. Let me attach it one more time. And I normally don't leave these kind of issues in here, but I think this is helpful. Like if you guys have the same issues, then you can figure it out. And then we can just go ahead and do a compile code. So now this should be null, right? Because it is empty. So we can go in here. And then now we can look at our code. This is the code that we're gonna be executing. And then if our embedded c -sharp compiler work, we should be OK here. It looks like we did work. We can go and look at the variables. So there's a lot of information in here. Here's the 3, the 14, 15, 93, which is the value of pi. And then it's going to be getting the results, which, which it all work. And then I can hit continue. But you're going to see that, oh, yeah, we did get the hello world. This works cool. So it looks like that work. And we also got the value of x in here. So everything works. So now we can go ahead and hit play. It looks like that part, it's working correctly. So the next piece that I want to do, though, is I already have the part where if you go back into our tester. So this is from the previous video. And, and a couple of videos behind could be the previous or the one before. I think it's the previous video. <laughs> but anyway, so when we're calling ChatGPT through our client, we're getting a process response, and this is basically the code that we're getting back from ChatGPT. So right now, we're just logging that information. But what I want to do, though, is I want to make sure that we are compiling the information. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say, you know what, Roslink or Runner, can you get me your instance, which is a singleton? And then can you run that code for that, right? So I'm just going to say, you know what, give me that code. I'm going to say response, that data, and then that it's going to have the code that we're going to need to execute. But there's going to be a problem because ChatGPT sometimes includes information like explanations. Sometimes you tell it not to include explanations and it still in includes explanations. So we're going to write an extension method to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if it happens, we'll, we'll make sure that we at least we do our best to clean it up. So what I'm going to do here under ChatGPT is let's go ahead, go ahead and create a new folder. And this is going to be called extensions. And I'm going to create a new c -sharp file. And this c -sharp file is going to be called ChatGPT extensions. And we'll just do that here, ChatGPT extensions. And then hit Enter. And then we, I'm not, I don't need to use this namespace. I'm just going to leave that. And then, so what I'll do on, on this one, though, these extensions need to be static. So I'm just going to do public static class. 
And then it's also going to have a static, uh, basically a static method. But before we do that, I'm going to need a couple of constants. It's going to do const constant string, keyword. And it's going to be very simple because we're going to be looking for specific things when we're getting the code from, you know, from ChatGPT. So if we have the, the word using in here, then we're basically going to assume that this is going to be a script. But we can do something like Unity Engine. And uh, again, this is not super robust, but it's going to work for what we need. And then I also need to do another keyword, which is going to be public class. Public class. Basically, it's going to search for these things. So it's going to do public class. And then I also need to do another one that is going to be read only. And this one is going to be basically a list of, a list of filters that I'm going to filter out of the data that we're getting back. So public static constant read only. OK, so let me let me try this again. I think I'm explaining too many things and getting confused. So basically, it's going to be an array of C sharp, uh, an array of filters. So we can just do, and this one is going to be a C sharp. OK, and then so this is going to be the filters that we're going to be applying to the code that we're getting back. This could be other things, but Markdown is always doing something like this, right? I don't want to include the word C sharp when we're parsing through this. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say chat GPT, uh, chat GPT response. So it's going to say chat GPT response. And then this is going to be the method that we're going to be calling. So call clean up. And then we're going to be cleaning this up from the chat GPT response. And then chat GPT response. OK, so it looks like that works. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be applying some filters. And the filters is going to be done by saying, Try these filters. And then I'm just going to say to list. And I'm going to be looping through each. So we can say for each. And for each F, which is going to be for each filter, I'm going to say chat GPT response that data equal to chat GPT response that data. And then we're going to be replacing the filter value that we got that we're specifying above with empty. So I'm just going to do empty here. So what's going to happen is if this finds you know the word C sharp, which is going to be set to empty, and then if we had any other filters in here, it's also going to allow us to basically clean that up. I also need to split this because we might get some explanations. So it's going to say explanations, and then I'll just say var code lines equal chat GPT response and data. And then we're going to be split, splitting this by using the markdown value. So now we can extract the code. So it's going to say extract code. And in here is where we're going to be basically able to extract just the code, not the explanation. So it's going to say chat that data. And then we can say code lines first or default. And then if the code that we're reading contains, basically it's going to be going through the array. So if it contains the word, you know, using Unity Engine, then it's going to know that that is the line that we're looking for. Or if we want to do an or, we can say contains, and we can say keyword public class. And if it finds that, that's going to be the, basically the line that we're looking for, and that's going to contain the code. So we can do that and then return the chat GPT response. So again, this is going to clean the code in here if it has a word any words that we have in the filters. And then these are going to be for, for looking up the code in an array that we're explaining. We can just go ahead and remove this. So these, we're going to be call it, calling it from the ChatGPT client. So we can just call it from here. And I'm just going to do a code cleanup at the end. And the reason why I can do that is because this entire object is a ChatGPT response. So that's why I'm wrapping this with parentheses. So that's going to be what's going to allow us to basically parse through that code. So now what we can do, though, is we're going to start looking into this class and executing it and getting that code from ChatGPT to, to execute. So let's try that and make sure that that's going to work. We can also start adding things like if we wanted to display you know, the scenario question, we can add the scenario question and, and basically start mapping some of those properties in here if you wanted to do that. So anyway, so what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and start getting back into the ChatGPT tester. And remember, in the ChatGPT tester, we have the prompt that it's going to be the one that we want to execute. 
So this prompt, what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and go into the actual prompt and say text area, and we can do something like like this, so that it's not, it's not too small. So we can have multiple lines, and we can see the entire question. So we can, let, okay, there we go, so that works. So what I'm gonna do here is create a Unity script, and we can say call debug this, and the reason why I want to tell ChatGPT to generate that is because I want to attach a script that is going to get generated to this specific game object. So in here on the additional code, that's basically what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say game object define, and then I want to look for ChatGPT tester, and then once I get that, I'm going to be adding a component, and the component that I'm going to be adding is going to be debug this. And obviously there's a lot of things that could happen with this, right? We could have issues, and but that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out for now. Just trust me that it's gonna work. And then what I'll do here on the on code completed, we can do, basically we can add a log entry just to make sure that we know that it worked. And we can do that by going into, I thought I had a logger in here, which is, okay, there we go. We can go into that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this component going to the logger, logger, logger the info, we can say wrong, code completed correctly. And then if it doesn't complete correctly, we know we have an exception check and this shouldn't execute. So, so that should work. We don't need this code in here anymore because this is gonna come from chat GPT. We also don't need any of these result bars, at least not for now. But for now, this should work. And we go back into here and I have something called service, right? That is gonna, that has or service. And if you remember, we have or environment, Python environment that we can activate. So I'm just gonna do PS1 because this is PowerShell. And if it activates, we're gonna see this in green in here, in, in my case. And then once it's activated, we can do something like chat GPT and then hit enter. I always start this before, which is the Python wrapper just to make sure that we can communicate to ChatGPT. Okay, we can see if we get the result. So let's wait for ChatGPT to execute. And we did get a result of four. So we know that that part is working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Python and then have my service in here that we can activate. And once we do that, we should get a port here. And remember in the previous videos, we, we worked on the Python service. If you go here to ChatGPT client, it needs to match that port and that IP, which it currently matches. So we should be ready to be able to test this. Let's go ahead and hit play. And what I'm gonna do though is, let's go ahead and see, okay, I wanted to, sh I wanna show you this as it's running, but we'll, we'll go ahead and hit ask, and that will execute that line, and we can go back in here into PowerShell. And you can see, create a Unity c -sharp script called debug this, which is play. So what I'm gonna do though, is let's go ahead and go into, this session in here and process response. Let me see if I can get into it before it finishes. And we can see if this is already running. And it looks like it ran too fast. Okay, so we can go into Unity and see if it, if things work. It actually worked. We have the word, hello world. And if we go in here into the tester, you can see that it did add a script called debug this. And we can also go into Rustling Runner. You can see the code that got generated. Let's go ahead and try one more time so you guys can see this works. I'm gonna go ahead and ask ChatGPT pretty fast and you can see the question going now. All right, so it looks like we got the response back in here and we can see that we did get the generated code and it already has been parsed because we did that on the client side. And we can go here into our instance we can just step out of that and then step out of that as well. And then we can step into this. And you can see the updated code has everything that we need still, so that looks good. And if we go down here, this should have all the additional code that I added, right? It's gonna generate that, and then we're gonna be looking for that script, and then attaching the script that we just generated from ChatGPT, which is really cool. This is really cool and powerful. So if we go ahead and hit, you know, continue, we should be okay. And you, you can see that we didn't have any explanations in the code that we got back because we're parsing out of that. So if we go back into Unity now, you can see that here's our code and here's the word, hello world. So if you wanted to change that, let's say that we wanted to go here into the tester, we can say create a Unity C-sharp script, script called debug this, which we can say 
generates, I'm gonna say generates 10, 10 cubes. Oh, we're gonna say pre primitive cubes. And I think that looks okay. So once you're happy with that, you can say as ChatGPT. So if we go back in here, we can see that, let's see if we have a new question. Looks like we do. Create a, C, a Unity C Sharp script called debug this, which generates 10 primitive cubes. All right, so it looks like we did get a response. Let's see what ChatGPT is telling us. And this might not work because it is sending us a, a cube, you know, a cube. Actually, it is gonna work. Let's see, so it generated a public game object, game object cube prefab, and then it's not really doing anything with this, which is pretty funny, but then it's using that create primary. So this should actually work. It's just, this wasn't necessary, which I, I think is interesting. And then let's go ahead and do F5. We don't really need to do anything in here. So I'm just gonna do F5. And if we go back into Unity, hopefully if everything works, we should see 10 cubes, which, you know, they got generated. And let me go ahead and get out of the 2D view here. So you can see that we have our 10 cubes. I mean, it's not something super impressive, but the fact that it's generating code for ads and, and it's running in Unity is really cool. And if you go back into here, you can see the code that got generated. We can see the additional code that we generated. And again, if you wanted to use some resolve bars to do additional things, you can, but I'm gonna keep it as simple as this and then on the next video, we'll start implementing additional features to this UI, like wiring this up, like the scenario title that we need to do, adding the progress, the scenario question. And then I'm also going to start looking into hooking up the actual Sketchfab client so that we can start getting some models. And ultimately, this is gonna look a lot cooler and it's gonna be a lot more robust. So if you guys like this, let me know. And also know that I'm gonna be putting this code in Patreon, and if you become, you know, a patron today as source code, I think there's a new tier, I don't think there's actually a new tier available that will give you the entire source code as of today, which I already push everything. And you can get it for, you know, if you get that tier, you can get, you can get all the source code. I'm also gonna be able to answer questions for you. So be sure to check that out. So that's everything for today, guys. Thank you very much.